Hey, deserve listeners, happily ever after. Let's watch. Last night, Michael and I had sex because I thought our marriage was going to work out. He was all for taking his Instagram down. Couldn't find out. He lied to me. He told me what I wanted to hear just to get into my pants. I have put up with a lot with Michael in the last two years, and this is the lowest blow you can do to me. This is not the Michael I marry. This is not the Michael that I love. Yeah, you'll hear that from abusive people. They will say, I don't know what happened to my partner, the abused individual, the victim. I don't know what, like, when they actually, when the victim starts to push back, when the victim starts to assert themselves, the abusive person will be like, I don't even, who are you? What's going on? Because up until that point, they might have actually been able to get away with every step of the way in terms of more control, more control, more, more control and then this person pushes back and they have a cognitive dissonance because on one hand, they want to be able to love the person because abusive people in this category often do legit love their victim, the victim of the abuse, in the way that they want to bond, they want to connect, they have affection for that person in their way. And so they feel that love and they're like, this person is pushing back and they have all their cognitive distortions around that, like they're abusing me or they're being unreasonable. You know, she's kind of framing it that way. She's basically saying that he tricked her into having sex with him. So that's, that's abusive. I mean, that's coercion. That's awful, right? So she's framing it that way. And I, I don't know what to think of that. I mean, it's, it's not a... It's not terribly irrational to believe that, but I don't think that's what happened. I think he said, I will get rid of my Instagram, hoping that she would calm down so that he could talk with her. It just also so happened that they ended up having sex. That's my take on it. So point is, is that uh, uh, abusive individuals will, they'll often say things like that. I don't know, like he just turned on me all of a sudden. And they'll often think it's because someone's influencing. So I bet you anything, because again, that cognitive dissonance, it's like, why would they push back? Because what they're, there's a part of them, or at least they're hearing that the person is asserting themselves because it's okay for them to do that. It's, it's right for them to do that. They have the right to assert themselves in, in that way that there's a message, but they can't believe that to be true for all the reasons that I've talked about. And so how do they reconcile that? you know what's happening right now what what this person is doing to me is unfair so and what i'm asking for in terms of more control that is fair it's fair for me to control everything about him so what's happening must be influence from the outside or maybe he never really you know there's all these mental games that they'll play so i i, I wonder if she will conclude that he is actually cheating on Instagram and or that he's never loved me. He's been scamming me for a green card from the very beginning. I don't know if I can handle it emotionally, even being a strong woman I am. I've done a lot for this man. And if he was to do me like that, I'm telling you, I can't. I just can't. So... You know, I have compassion for everyone and I have compassion for her, but she's made her bed and now she has to, you know, lie in it. Or they both do, I suppose. So I, I don't have any, I don't have any sympathy really for someone that, at least the way they're, it's shown on the show, we can't know what really happened, but for someone that destroys their life and someone else's life and then thinks of themselves as the victim and says, poor me. I, I, it's hard to have any sympathy. Now, she probably is massively distorted and she believes all these things to be true. So I guess she's a victim of her own brainwashing or something, I don't know. But it's hard to have compassion for the person because I'm gonna take a guess and say that if Angela wasn't the way that she is, there would be no story. They would get married, he'd come to the States, and they just live a regular life. Everything is because she has created it, right? Uh, at least after the very beginning when he actually did cheat on her. I just wanna go home. Hello. 
I know I lied while we were on bed together, but my intention was not to hurt Angela. I just want to calm her down so we can talk peacefully. I even packed my suitcase last night because I was so hopeful that Angela will forgive me and hear me out. The other part of this that I've been commenting on, and I don't really want to get into this space really, is I'm just really trying to figure out what the producers are trying to, t what story they're trying to tell exactly. Because it's not just these two people that are involved in the storytelling, right? It's the producers and the editors and the camera people and everyone. So I don't know what story they're trying to tell. And I, I don't know, well, well, it's interesting to think about what effect this could have. Because the vast majority of people that watch these shows in, in this episode, I'm going to take a guess that they don't actually consume anything on YouTube or, you know, they don't go to online forums or anything. And so they don't, they're just watching the show and they go on with their lives. I'm just going to take a guess. It seems weird, right? <laughs> I mean, because for me, not only with this show, but also really anything, you know, I was watching House of the Dragon, which I loved. And I was talking about that show last night with someone and they're like, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm having a hard time grasping what's happening, like all the time jumps. And what I was saying is, yeah, I totally understand that. The reason why I can really enjoy the show and I know what's happening is because I, I've read the books and I also watch every episode twice, like really closely. And I watch like five or you know seven different videos of people breaking down every episode on YouTube. And so uh, they catch things that I didn't catch. And so I'm prepared for the next episode because of that. And so it's just hard for me to relate to people that just consume TV shows and they don't go to YouTube afterwards. <laughs> and I'm sure you might not be able to relate to that. Either. But we're just going to assume that, you know, 98% of people, when they watch the show, they don't do that because I don't think that's very normal, at least for my generation. I don't Anyway, at least a percentage of people are like that. And so when they watch this show, are they being influenced? And I suppose to believe that women can't abuse men or that this is okay or that her perspective makes sense or that it's okay to control black and brown people or people that don't live in the States or I don't know, something. You just wonder if it's having an influence or the opposite. Maybe most people when they watch this without any kind of education are just like, ooh, that's abusive. I didn't know women could abuse men or whatever. But yeah, so it's not TLC's job to educate the public per se, but you wonder about the the effect and their responsibility, I suppose, as storytellers. Um, I'm guessing they believe, look, we're just there. We shoot the footage. We ask the questions. We try to put together a story that represents what's, what happens. Yeah, we might spruce things up here and there, but we're just telling their story. It's It's not our story to tell. Uh, because I'm thinking that the solution, the only solution you could have to this is if you had either questions directed at the two about abuse, like, do they ever just say to Angela, hey, Angela, you're violent and controlling of him. A lot of people are saying that. Uh, what do you think about that? Or to Michael, so Michael, how do you feel about giving up control of this and to see her reaction? What kind of feel, you know, there's ways you can ask a question that can you know, that can be saying something. The other thing that they could be doing is by having some kind of disclaimer, right? Of like, look, this is what the story, but we want to comment that women can abuse men and that abuse can take a lot of different forms and that control can be within a relationship that can seem loving. An abusive person can cry and can feel victimized, right? Can have hurt feelings. So, don't mistake the situation as one that isn't necessarily abusive. You know, they could have that kind of statement, but you know, this show never has that. And I think it'd be kind of unusual and, uh, or they could just not show it, which some people will say, it's like, we need to ban Angela and Ed and other people from the show. And, you know, I don't know what to think about that. Everyone can make their choice about that, of course. And the producers of the show will make their choice. But to me, in terms of educating the public, I actually am glad that this is out there. I mean, not out there, but it's available to us to actually look at and comment on so that we can educate people. 
I, I think that there's a lot of education that can happen from this footage. So I, I, if this didn't exist and if all of the couples that had crossed that line in the show were cut from the show, I wouldn't be able to provide the commentary that, I, that I've had. And honestly, I've gained some education watching this because I have my examples that I pull from in terms of abusive behavior from clinical life, from my personal life. But those are just some examples. But to see this, you know, it just gives me another chance to re-familiarize myself or to see another presentation or the profile to, as I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm learning again or I'm solidifying my thoughts. So, but anyway, so he apparently is going to her right now. And if he holds firm, I don't think she is going to relent. I, so there, there's a possibility that her, in her state, she might actually say, okay, fine, you can keep your Instagram and she will give in, but then she'll, because she doesn't ultimately want to lose him. But then in the end, her abusive behavior will, will return. You know, like, you know, abusive behavior doesn't just go away, usually. It's pretty entrenched in someone's personality and their reactivity, their entitlement. Or he will give in and say, I'll give it up, I'm sorry. And, and that will be hard to watch. Or he will say, I'm not going to give in, and she will explode and be abusive. So I guess we'll see which one. I had to get sick. You can, just, uh, you can go home tonight, Michael. I can't no. get a plane out tonight anyway. No, no. Why would I leave you? I can't leave you here. Come on, no. baby. No, I'm going to go home. No. It's not going to work out. You're going to find something else. I'm tired. Really, I love you, but I'm tired. I love you too, much. I fought baby. for this relationship from the beginning. Baby, try to understand me. I'm not... I can't genuine. understand somebody that betrays their wife. You're a liar. You are my wife now. Come on. You, you stand get, there. Get the back. Wait, wait. The okay. So, we have our answer. I don't think there's any turning back from this step in the escalation that he is holding firm because he, I think she was keeping the door ajar a little bit there of just like, well, maybe he'll say that he's going to give up the Instagram because I think if he said that right then, she would have turned around. But he's not indicating that. He's kind of indicating, like, you're not being reasonable. He's you know, trying to be nice and trying to be reasonable. And he puts hands on, which isn't recommended really in the situation like this in general, really not recommended with her because it'll give her an excuse to put hands on. So let's see what happens here. I'm so okay good that he's able to recognize that and he but she does this to him constantly two wrongs don't make a right but I just want to point that out okay, okay. I'm tired can't do it Mike. you gotta go I'm tired of being like you can't I can't I have my own ill pitch get out yeah I mean I'm really glad that he's holding firm because of all the reasons I've said before. It just, because if he hadn't, if he gave in here, it would really worry me because it's, once you give that up, it's, there's really no, it's hard to get that back, right? Plus you're setting a precedent that abuse will ha get results. And so he's holding firm, which is good. Plus it's the just thing to do. There's no reason why he would have to cancel his Instagram account. So, He's holding firm, he's really trying, he's really trying to be reasonable, really trying to reach out to her, trying his different moves that he's tried in the past, you know, be nice, listen, give in, lie. He, he, he'll ha he has a voice that he tries to use sometimes where he's like, no, Angela, you know, he'll try to put his foot down verbally and he's trying all the things and it's not working, seemingly. Uh-uh. Get your stuff, I'm tired. I thought that you making love to me and we had passionate sex that you really wanted to take this thing down. And then in the interview, which we know happens a lot you know, longer after they shoot usually, especially when they're in these kinds of scenes, uh, they shoot this much later than I think they shoot the entire show, the entire season. So the fact that they're sitting together, does that mean that they're, I mean, it means they're in the same country, right? So either she's over there or he's over here or I don't know. What's going on? Are you okay? Oh, uh, I and Angie are uh, still having some argument about the social media thing. She said she, I should take down the IG, 
which can't I have my own say in this? No, 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 no. I'm not against anybody having their own Instagram. It's what you do on Instagram. Well, well, you, well if I'm you're doing. letting women do googly eyes, I am not doing anything. Yikes. <laughs> So that's the accusation that he's letting women do googly eyes. <laughs> oh boy! Bunch of people message on uh, on the page, which I don't even care. I don't even read about them. But she is the one thinking maybe I'm flirting with other women. That's not it. I don't think this whole thing is about an Instagram. I see a lot of wrong in him and. I see a lot of wrong in her, and there's no communication, so it's always going to be a problem because they need to learn how to communicate with each other. Yeah, you'll almost always hear that phrase. People will come into my office, and it's fine because there's not a lot of education about this, and people will say, like, we have trouble communicating, and I, I always internally kind of chuckle because it could mean literally a million different things. In this situation, that's not how I would frame it, right? I would frame it the way I've been framing it. Framing it like that sounds like they're both contributing to the problem. <laughs> She's controlling to you because she can't just get mad at you and you guys live in the same house and you're so far away. Yeah. And it, it and she she doesn't have control and it's driving her crazy. I mean, it's not my fault. No. I mean, that's kind of telling, right? That the friend is like, the reason why she gets so, so upset is because she doesn't have control. And if you lived with her, she would have full control over all aspects of your life. And then she would be calm. Yeah, that's probably true. Not being in the US, I always want to be with her, you know, right. live together as a family. But nothing we can do about that until we get, even when we eventually be together on, on that same roof, it might still continue. It might. Yeah. And so he's seeing it right that he's saying he's thinking, look, if I don't draw the line here and establish that I have the right to have some freedom in my life, to have a job, to have a freaking Instagram account. And if she won't let me have this, then I don't want to live with her. I don't want to be with her because she has to be able to accept that I have a say sometimes about something. So it's, he's not asking like Usman to marry another person, he's asking what m most people have, which is an Instagram account, right? Your grandma probably has an Instagram account. Everyone does, a lot of people have an Instagram account. He's asking for a, just a fundamental, tiny little thing, really. And so the way he phrased that makes me think like he's concluding, look, if, if I can't have this, then there's no sense moving forward. At least that's what it says. So I think for him, he's like, I want this to work and I want to convince her that she has to give in. And this is the litmus test. This is the test. If she can give me this, then that'll give me hope that we can actually be together. It's, so it sounds like he's saying, I don't want to live with her in the States because if I do that, given her behavior, she would control me because I, I wouldn't know my way around the States. I wouldn't have support. And then my life would truly be controlled. This, well, is, well. this, is, this is a hard one. Let's go have a drink, let her cool down a little bit. And if it doesn't come together, it doesn't come together. But don't just drive home now. You don't live around the corner. I don't think she's going to calm down. Repeatedly, this has been happening where she, is, she has a firm line. Get rid of it for instance, since the beginning of the season when they were just talking over video chat. Get rid of your Instagram or I will abuse you. Plain and simple. You know. I've never put my foot down with Angela before. And this time, I don't want to back off. Angela will have to be the one to compromise. I love her, but if it costs to be the end of our marriage, maybe it's not meant to be. Right. So, good. That's what I've been saying. I, that's what it sounded like he was saying. So, that's good. He's like, look, if she, if she can't let me have this, then there's really no point in us moving forward. Now... There's a chance that she will give in to allowing him to have an Instagram account. <laughs> then the abuse will just take another route or she'll say, well, I'll get rid of his Instagram account six months from now or I'll sabotage his Instagram. I don't know. So, you know unless she has really specific long-term treatment that she voluntarily goes to and wants and uses well as meaningfully using the therapy, then it's hard to 
have optimism for this relationship not being the way it has been. All right, well, let's end it there. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.